Hi, I'm making this uh, partly as a commentary on the types of painting I made over the course of this month, also to see and document my improvement. So I am not good at um, botanics and gardening because I lack the patience to iron out the finer details. As you can see, this first painting of an iris it has completely failed. The second painting of um, smaller flowers, they're getting fairly better, but I was very new to painting botanicals and flowers, and I didn't like it. Also, I love having background, so whenever I painted still life, I've always made sure to add colorful backgrounds. Having backgrounds is one of the reasons that I got into watercolor. For this one, I try to use a very special type of paint for a background. It's called Daniel Smith uh, Duochrome. But uh, to no avail, I failed because you hardly can tell the separation of color in this painting. This one was an iris, so if any of you are wondering. This next one is something that I've that I've uh, it's, it's really hard to look at because this is a horrible painting <laughs> it doesn't look like the flower at all and it's ugly the details are not very good and the shadows they look more like prints rather than shadows and creases so I do not like this one but I kept it anyways just to show my improvement now these next ones are narcissus flowers and they're very they're, they're very pretty but the trick is to paint the shadows instead of painting the petals because the petals are white um, as you can see I have a lot of trouble staying inside the lines so that's something I need to work on. This next one is of a kitten and I really 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 love ragdoll kittens. I've always wanted one. In fact, I'm very sure that I'm going to have one in the future. Just not right now. Yeah. So I painted this one um, a month ago, very early. So the detail is not that good. But at least you can tell that it's the shape of a kitten. So there you go. This next one is my another failed attempt at flowers. I tried to paint a really foggy type of flower so it fades into the background. But the, um, the result isn't really pretty, but at least I tried. And we can tell it's poppy flowers, so it's fine. Yeah. This next one is also poppy, poppy flowers. I painted half of it and I gave up because after I finished these three flowers and I thought to myself, this does not look like flowers at all. I might as well just start another one because if I keep painting this one, I will just make myself miserable. So I left it at that. It's still sitting at the bottom of the pile, but that is it. That is it with poppies. Th this one is tulips. It's one of my better ones, believe it or not. It shows a lot of improvement from the first flower I've ever painted. Um, so I've been painting flowers for almost a week, and this was the result. I tried to fo I tried to paint the details as much as possible, and this one took me well over forty minutes, believe it or not. Oh my gosh. This one is of a tiger lily, and believe it or not, this one is actually quite good <laughs> because you can see the shadows and the definition in the center, and uh, the background is pretty because it's made from duochrome colors. It's made by this paint um, paint manufacturer called Supervision. I will do a detailed... Uh, I will do a detailed explanation of all my paints later. So these ones are 
I don't know what they're called, but they have large petals. The left one and the right one are not from the same photo. The, the left ones are really transparent and the right ones are really solid. So they look out of sync in this photo, but it's fine. This one is the one that I tried to copy, um, Maria Rezik or Rezinski. Uh, I don't know how to pronounce her last name. I should ask her, but she has so many followers. I don't know if she will respond to my question, but um, yeah, these are cherry blossom flowers. This is my final attempt at painting flowers before I moved on to something else. These ones um i'd have to say they're one of my best attempts at painting flowers but it's because she was very detailed and i followed her to the letter also she added background which was excellent for me because i love background too this next one is just an exercise in petals so i quickly um put it in now this one is one of my first landscapes ever and I just realized how jar how jarring the river looked and the grass and the trees does not look like trees at all but if I had chance to fix it maybe I'll I'll make a video of refixing all my old paintings let's see if I can fix them but then watercolor is known for its unforgiving nature so it's not like I can scrub the color off Maybe I could, but it's just not worth it. I'll improve in the future. This is one of the ones when I first realized that clouds are difficult to paint. So I was happy with most of the other landscapes, but the clouds are the ones that puzzled me the most. So I spent uh, some time learning how to make clouds. In this painting, I realized how beautiful my paints are. I mean, I've always known I've had excellent artist grade paints because I have this habit of buying the most expensive thing I could afford in order to fuel my habits. So I bought MG M Graham paints and they're quite expensive, but they are very, very good. And this color and the color of the sky made me realize how vibrant the blue series in their colors are. So this is the one that I mentioned earlier, how I wanted to practice clouds. So I practiced clouds in the first, second, third, and the fifth painting. And everyone said the first one is the best. But the first one is the one that I spent the least amount of time on. The second and the fifth painting I spent like 10 minutes each on. And it's kind of discouraging. The other two are just uh, daily homework lessons from my watercolor class. Now this one is just a fun little painting about a lightning strike. I used um I used masking fluid to paint the lightning because I thought it would make it natural, but maybe it's the brush that I used to paint to paint with masking fluid because this does not look natural at all. So I'll ha this is a painting that taught me a lesson. I cannot use nylon fiber brushes for masking fluid because the brush strokes comes out very jarring. Over here, this is a picture of a forbidden city. This is also one of the failed attempts because the branches, they don't look like branches at all. And the trees um, does not look like snow and branches. It just look like random shapes. So I'll have to keep this one as a lesson on what to do in the future. For this one, I paint the masking fluid over the snow, but that was a mistake. I should have added highlights instead of masking fluid. Um, this one is a picture of a pond. Th this one is also something that I've taught me. The river down below, the lake down below, the pond, I suppose, has definition, but the pond up ahead does not have definition, so I should add that. Also, this one has taught me that I need good tree brushes. So after I drew this one, I was like, I have to go on online and buy some tree brushes um, with harder bristles. So that's what I did. Because to paint leaves, like in this one, 
and grass, you need hard boar bristles instead of the soft squirrel or soft goat or wolf hair or mink hair that they, uh, like the famous Kolinsky um, pens, the Kolins the Kolinsky brushes. They are known for its ability to hold water, but they will not be good for drawing trees. Hmm. This one is just a fun little project for fireworks. I've wanted to test out my Paul Rubens sh golden shimmering paints. Um, so under the blue background, I don't think it came out quite correctly or that vibrantly, but I think they'll be fine if I use them sparingly. I need to find a way to use my shiny paints. Um, because I bought them and I haven't used them before. For this one, it's a picture that my mom posted in her uh, social media network. It's a picture of the sunset in front of my house, our house in back in Canada. And it was beautiful. I've I've posted the photo of this before in my long process, in my process videos. I couldn't quite capture the beauty of the sunset. I'll try to improve in the future. There you go. This next one came to me in a dream. I dreamt that I was in a little boat and I was sailing through the sea. And the sea is a sea of purple and pinks. So everything was purple. And it was all beautiful. This is an excellent expression of the quality of paper. Look at this, it's um, cold pressed. So that's why there's all these grooves that are, we, I can make highlights with, highlights of the water and the ripples. This is one of those that I copied from the internet. I found a picture that I really like and I downloaded it. I drew the outlines and I filled up the colors. This one took a long, long time, just like all the ones that I downloaded from the internet and tried to copy. They take a long time because it's way too detailed. I think this one took me three or four hours in total. I just didn't stop. That day, I just kept drawing and drawing and drawing. But it's a lovely photo of two girls, and I really, really like it. That's the dream, having a cat and a dog and um, sleeping in your room. Hmm. This is the one of a forbidden city. The original photo really do look like this. The background is all blurred and there's snow everywhere. This is one of my prouder ones. Yeah, because this one took not a lot of time. It's quite easy, but it's, uh, it's very pretty to make. This is a Milky Way painting. I If I have to do this again, I can point out a lot of mistakes and... I will try to fix it. For example, the mountain is drawn up too high. There's too many stars and they're squiggly and they're not all pointing towards the right direction. And the Milky Way is all charred, but I think it's pretty, so it's fine. This one is my attempt at drawing Jojo. I love Jojo and I wanted to draw him. But unfortunately, he's too hard. Oh, yeah, drawing people, man, they're way too hard. Uh, my main issue is that I do not know how to draw skin tone. So on the left, the skin tone turned blue. And on the right, the skin tone turned dark and dirty on his forehead. And also, Jojo has a crazy hairstyle. So I have no idea how to make dimensions on these crazy donut-shaped hair of his and his hair has no shadows or they do have shadows but they're all in the wrong places so after this i was discouraged for a long time and i drew bucharati bucarati yeah uh and i spent a long time in his hair oh my god like hours two hours just to draw every strand of his hair um i don't think it's quite successful, but at least it's, I mean, it's okay, yeah, it's okay, yeah, it's fine. Mm, this is something that took 
less than ten minutes in total, not including the waiting time for the things to dry. But this is a very very easy exercise in dawn and sunset painting. It's one of my favorites because it's so insanely easy. So, yay! Skylines and landscapes are easy for me, but details are not. This one, same thing. This took me less than ten minutes total brush time, not including the time I have to wait for the wet paint to dry. So I love painting these clouds and these sunsets because they are much more easier for me to draw. Yeah. This one took well over an hour because I tried to make the mountain all foggy and filled with trees and stuff. I think it come it came out looking a little messy. Also, I tried to make the elk look majestic, and there's a ominous figure on the left is the elk's wife, but I don't think that was very clear. This is one of my prouder ones. Is pictures of orange or grapefruit slices. That is insanely easy to do. You just have to load up your brush full of paints and you you just point it down. Dot 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 dot. You just put all the dots down below, and then you paint the overall colors and voila, juicy grapefruit slices. This is waves. When I painted this, I only have had round brushes. I left my flat brushes at home, so this was a challenge for me. It's not very good because I only had round brushes in my defense. So I will attempt this painting again in the future because I love seascape and I love blue. Um, hopefully the next one will be better. Yeah, you can see the gouache made tons of thick marks on the waves. This is my, oh, I thought I switched the order of these things, but before I painted the grapefruit slices painting, this is one of the first paintings that I tried um, because I want to try to draw fruit, slices of fruit. I, I want to see if the dots arranged on the page would make sense as, um, as a slice of grapefruit. And to my amazement, if you look at this from far away, it really does look like orange. So, I mean, grapefruit. So, excellent. This is one of my watercolor homeworks. Um, so I do my homework on time. Yay, I'm a good student. Unfortunately, I am not good at writing Chinese. So the words are written very poorly. Yeah, let's just move on from that. This is a painting which I did sunset because I'm in desperate need of using up my yellows and oranges. I have too much yellow and oranges and I ran out of all the blues. Because of all the seascape I painted. For example, this one. This one is one of my favorite seascapes because it contains so much color and it's so pretty. I love it, I love it, I love it. Mm. It's not that good, but I'm learning uh, the ocean, you can see the transparency of the ocean in this painting, which is something I'm quite proud of, although the sea foam does not look like sea foam. This reminds me of a classical Chinese novel, Red Lantern Hangs Up High. Da hong dong dong gao gao gua. Mm. Yeah, I read it and I watched it as a child. It scarred me for life because I did not know humans could be that cruel. <laughs> but, ah well, yeah. So um, it's, it's, it's very enjoyable because the shadows are purple. Shadows are blue and purple, so I had fun doing that. This one is also one that I made because I was intrigued by the pink and the yellow hues of the sunset. Surprisingly, not a single yellow was used in this painting. Yellow ochre is the one that, uh, it is the color that made this shine. All the light yellowish hues are from yellow ochre. So it's a terra um, color instead of a behemoth yellow or bismuth yellow, aurelian or lemon yellow. Yeah. 
This is one of my, I would say, failed attempts at drawing a foggy mountain because it doesn't look like fog, fog at all. It just looks like layers and layers of nothing. Yeah, so it doesn't look that good. Ah, oh, well, it's fine. I It's my first time using Archer's paper, and I was very impressed. So I didn't want to waste paper, so I flipped it over and I did another one. This one is much better. But not that much better. I will practice more on this subject in the future. This one is a picture of a forbidden city with the back all blurred out. So I love it when the back is blurred. So I am able to practice um, form and shapes without going on to going into all that crucial details, um, laboring details. So the only detailed ones are the fruits in the front, and the back is all uh, dots and blurryness. This one's the ocean. Again, this is a copy of Maria Rezik's mm, painting of the ocean. I've painted this seascape three times. Yes, three times in my life. Twice using super large paper and once using small paper. This is a small one. This is my favorite painting of all. Thank you.